here you have this oxygen taken down, but you got to draw in the lone pair. You can't just have the tail of an arrow pointing to an oxygen. We have to draw in the lone pair here since there's no negative charge. These are technicalities, but these are things that TAs tend to take off points for. Now, more important, what functional groups did we get in our products? We have a carboxylic acid and a mean. Good. Those are the key things. Now, we've learned that carboxylic acids have two different forms. So we have to remind ourselves to ask ourselves, what's the correct form? So is this the correct form in these conditions for this carboxylic acid? Yes. We've also learned that amines have two different forms. Is this the correct form? No. no. Okay. So let's go ahead and write the correct form. So it'd be a shame to do all this work and lose some of the credit for not getting the right form here. So this is one of the common traps in the exam book. Right, so it's good that you're thinking about the mechanism. That's right. We can show the mechanism for that. We can use the hydronium again. To do the protonation. You can see how easy it is to forget about this. So you definitely really have to highlight this in your notes. Anytime you're doing predict the products, and the final product has a carboxylic acid and or an amine, you have to stop and ask, what's the correct form to draw the carboxylic acid or the amine in? Because they both have two different forms. In this case, we were in acidic conditions. So they should both be in their protonated form. We already had the carboxylic acid protonated, but we didn't have the amine protonated. As you do more problems in the exam book, you'll, say that you'll see this trap comes up a lot. And uh, so, it's good to, to watch out for this. To save time, I don't think we're going to do the basic hydrolysis, but there's also a basic hydrolysis. If we had done basic hydrolysis, what would the products have been? NH2 with the R group. Yeah, NH2 and? Um, the carboxylic acid minus the hydrogen. That's right. So it would have looked like this, right. which is called a carboxylate, mm -hmm. or you could just call it a deprotonated carboxylic acid. So it's very important when you do hydrolysis to ask, is it under acidic or basic conditions? Now, one thing that's very important for peptide chemistry is total acid hydrolysis. Total acid hydrolysis. And total acid hydrolysis is especially used for attacking these amide bonds. In fact, this is basically what we've done here. This is an example of the type of mechanism in total acid hydrolysis. I don't know if you've done any of those problems yet in the exam book. Maybe you haven't gotten to that problem set yet. But anyway, this is an example of acid hydrolysis. And the key point is acid hydrolysis breaks this amide bond. So what functional group does it produce? An amine and a carboxylic acid. But it produces a protonated amine and a protonated carboxylic acid because it's under acidic conditions. We know that proteins are made of amino acids. Proteins are made out of connected amino acids. But what type of bond connects to amino acids? Well, it turns out that amino acids are connected by amide bonds. The bond between two amino acids always looks like this. It looks like an amide bond. That's why we had to be so careful to understand amide chemistry. So what, how, can you, how can you split a protein up into separate amino acids? Total acid hydrolysis. If you use acid hydrolysis, it will break all the amide bonds. And then, you have to make, and then what, what will that turn things into? It will turn things into carboxylic acids and amines. Well, a protein is made out of a bunch of connected amino acids. And the connection between two amino acids is an amide bond. Amino acids are connected by amide bonds that look like this. This is not an amino acid that I have on the board, but it's similar to an amino acid because it has an amide bond. So how do we break a protein up into separate amino acids? We do that by breaking the amide bonds. And how do we break the amide bonds? Total acid hydrolysis. We use acid hydrolysis to break the amide bonds using the same exact mechanism we just did on the board.
what do we get when we do that? Well, the carbon side turns into a carboxylic acid, and the nitrogen side turns into an amine. Except since this is acid hydrolysis, it turns into a protonated amine. Okay. So this is the reaction that's used to cut proteins into pieces, into amino acids. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.